so in talking about Zora Neale Hurston, so like I said, she was born like a 1889, something like that, you know. And, and she she, um, uh, she was uh, born in I forget it's like Mississippi, some place like that. But she moved at a very early age to a, 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 the first black, one of the first black incorporated towns uh, in the United States. You know, after slavery, blah blah things happened. Then it's called I think so Eatonville. So it's in Florida, okay. And so she was raised in this atmosphere, uh, the at atmosphere, whatever that word is. Of, uh, of basically, you know, you had your own black police force, your own educators and everything like that. So she, you know, that's how she, that's how she was raised. And I always, when people ask me, say, say people ask me, well, where, where were you born? Where are you from? I said, no, the question you want to ask is, where was I made? Hmm. You know, where was I made? And that's what I'm saying. You can be born any place, but where do you spend, what is your formative years? What, what has the most impact on you? So what I'm trying to say is that Zora Neale Hurston grew up in this, it's still, I guess you call it, segregated town or un, un, unto their own, um, but that's, how, you know, she's nurtured with love and all the rest of that stuff. Okay, so moving ahead, she went up to, and she, you know, she got a little education there. She goes to, um, uh, I think it's Lincoln University, then finally she ends up at Columbia University or Barnard College. But she was the only black, student at Barnard College. And I guess we're talking now the uh, 19 teens, something like that. And um, and I think she was also older when she went there too, because of the number of days, but she was an older student. But, but she, I think she even knocked her age down so people wouldn't know that she was older. Like, so she had a little maturity or you know, age or whatever it is. Um, but also at that, I mean, she, she was an um, uh, anthropology student. Uh, or post postgraduate ant anthropology. In fact, one of her classmates was Margaret Mead, this very famous anthropologist. Anyway, so anyway, after she graduated, after all the rest of that stuff, she becomes a um, uh, well, she does uh, writing. So she's she's a very famous novelist, a noted novelist, uh, short story writer, a couple of plays or whatever it is. Um, and so and, and so, but then she's now she's in this thing with the Harlem Renaissance. Remember, we have all these what we call cats, you know, like Langston Hughes. In fact, she she was roommates with Langston Hughes in, in, in one of these places in New Jersey, like Westford, New Jersey. Somebody like she's roommates with like Langston Hughes, but all these people like County Cullen, Gene Tumor, you know, Alain Locke, you know, all these great people. And that's just the writers, but there's musicians. There's a whole country like that. But the thing is, remember, she's still a, a woman, and you know. You know, patriarchy, you know, us and Ben, we got, we think, whatever we think, you know. But she had very strong opinions and she, you know, stuck to them because I insist because of where she was raised, okay? Now, just fast forward to where I'm at the end. One of the things she's noted for is that when they had the Supreme Court decision to desegregate the schools in the United States, you know, because they had this whole separate but equal, but of course it wasn't equal, <laughs> you know. Uh, but she said, no, no. We need separate but equal. We need equal. We don't need to integrate. You know, and of course everybody was against it. All these civil rights people, they, you know, we want to be part of America. You know, everybody's going to the kumbaya. They're going to accept us. You know, whatever. She said no, because she's informed by where she grew up. Now, sure enough, in fact, you have it here in South Africa. Think about it. During apartheid, you're separated, you know, but you have a common enemy, you know, and, you, and you've got to work together, you're forced to be together. But as soon as everything's free, and now you can mix with the colonial, ex-colonial masters, or still the colonial masters, then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, let me be like them. And so you, instead of supporting your own, you know, hotels or sure. schools, you start going to the big hotels, you know, and, and you, you throw your parties at the big, one of the biggest problems I have is this, with South Africa, I said this many, many times. Say, for instance, let's leave the big party. Let me just say a youth, a youth component of your or one of your parties. They they will go and uh, and they will go to a big hotel and spend all this money and give it to them. My thing is, well, if you know you're going to have your conference every five years or three, whatever it is, then that means you have five years. You can go to a township, build a structure, including working toilets for your conference. You go have your conference, and then you leave, and the structure is still there, and the township now has, you, you see how that works? Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, I, uh, <laughs> it don't work like that. So, anyway, so, uh, so my whole speech about um, this whole start, this whole thing started because you asked how, because I, I gave the speech for this bursary that uh, Colin gives out from you know, H Solutions every year. It's very good enough. You know, businessman doing back for the community. His bursaries to, uh, you know, was it primary schools and you know, up to high school, you know, first is good. Uh, and uh, um, I have been uh, lately, for some reason, I just really 
I'm feeling Sonia Sanchez, Sister Sonia Sanchez, this poet, this American poet. That's I really, I really, I've always liked her, but you know, somehow I just feel. So I, I got this little thing from her, uh, this poem that she's gonna put on the sleeves of love. And anyway, she had this little ditty before, and she mentions it Zora Neale Hurston that uh, Zora Neale Hurston had said, uh, had said something about, uh, because she's a trained anthropologist, she said something like, uh, you know, fear is the biggest emotion in earth, whatever. And then Sonia Sanchez, the response to that by saying, no, it's not fear, my sister. You know, fear will save your skin, sure, but love, love will save your skin and other people's skin. That's the essence of it. So with this little thing, what I did in my speech, I'm trying to make it short, so only like six minutes, 33 seconds. Hey, I'm a good keynote speaker. So anyway, uh, so I knew where I was going to end. I was going to end with the Sonia Sanchez poem. You know, now when I write, I think it's have to be clear with this, when I'm writing plays, I used to, I used, I used to have a, basically, I have to know the venue I'm going to be in. I don't have to know my audience, I have to know the venue, the plays on the proscenium or in the round or whatever, um, black box, whatever it is. But I also, I would write, I, I, would, I know where I was starting, I know where somewhere I was going, I necessarily didn't know where the play was going to end. But when I'm doing the keynote speak, I have to know where I'm going to end. And be, but no, then I work backwards. Now again, I bring up this whole playwriting thing because as a playwright, what you learn is that you shouldn't have a comma in your play that doesn't belong. In other words, if I take out something from the play, the whole play is going to fall apart. That's how. I, I, well, that's the way I work. You know. So when my when my little keynote speech, I knew it was going to end there. So I wanted to start with Zora Neale Hurston because I knew it was going to end with this thing um, that Sonia Sanchez said to Zora Neale Hurston, and then the poem comes from there. So, but the interesting thing about Zora Neale Hurston, because of the way she grew up, is just like Alice. It's like a little town that's mostly, you know, or whatever, I always say 98, 99%, you know, the African, you know, black, you know, autochthonous people from this region. Um, so I knew it was going to start this. I wanted to talk about Zora Neale Hurston, how she, how she grew up in this town, similar to Alice, and it was, you know, she was nurtured and loved there, and that carried her. All, 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 her, all her days. So I wanted to start there. So I started there, um, talking about Zora Neale Hurston and that, that kind of thing, and, and make an analogy to, uh, you know, comparisons to Alice. And then the book was most important because I knew my audience talking to students, you know, when people in bursaries. I explained to them, you know, sometimes when you get a, a bursary, something like that, you, you feel like you, some people feel like they won something, other people feel like they lost something. I said, no, no, this bursary is just that, this is just encouraging you. To keep to keep on going. Now, if you didn't get a bursary, you said, "Don't worry about it. There'll be other points in your life that you'll have encouragement." But money, I can say all this, but money notwithstanding, your encouragement comes from your community, comes from the love that that they give you. So my first thing is talk about making a comparison with uh, Zora Neale Hurston and, and and her circumstance with it, with that a little town in Florida, and the incorporated black town in Florida she had. Make an analogy there. Then I went to this, you know, don't feel you lost something. Then I went to this, um, then, then, then I went to Sonia Sanchez's poem about put on the sleeves of love, put on the arm, this whole thing about love. And it was really very concise, and, and forget that I said it, but I'm saying if I look at it as a playwright, it was like, really, act one, act two, act three, Claude, done. You know, mm. so it was really, I, 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 it was a, it was a good, good thing. I, I was dressed in my stuff, you know, hey, it's <laughs> regal, you know, all that stuff. It was great. It was mm. great.